Welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where currency competition is always on the menu. I am your host, Amanda, and today's episode is brought to you by Fort Galt. I suppose your name isn't Mr. Veerhoos. I suppose your name is Eric. Depends, depends who's asking. Depends who's asking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, tell us who you are. Yeah, um, so my name is Eric Voorhees. Um, I, I've been in the Bitcoin world as an entrepreneur and advocate for five years now, since 2011. Um, involved in a number of companies. Uh, I started Satoshi Dice, most notoriously. Um, I was a early member at, uh, at BitInstant, as well as a co-founder of Coinapult. And uh, for the last year and a half, I've been building Shapeshift.io. Neat. Well, I, uh, I, the main reason I wanted to talk to you is because I, I, I respect and uh, appreciate your your obvious short to medium term vision of where cryptocurrency markets are going, and really, I think currency markets because when you first got involved in. Bitcoin, uh, there were there wasn't this whole uh, growing ecosystem of com cryptocurrencies that were seriously competing with Bitcoin, and so what was it in 2011 that made you think, hey, this Bitcoin thing might actually catch on? I think I'll start a dice game online. What was it? <laughs> well, it didn't all happen that quickly, but uh, when I first heard about it, I. I got excited because it was essentially a way to move money around um, without anyone's permission. And that had never been done before. So there was there had never been a way to move value at a distance um, between two people without someone else, whether a, a bank or a, or a company, um, having a say in it or being able to block it or censor it or, or taking a fee or, or telling you when and how you can do it. And so that um, I, I realized pretty quickly that that was a very substantial innovation uh, and pretty much just threw out everything responsible I was doing and, and dove headfirst into the Bitcoin world. And how did you hear of Bitcoin? Did you did you have a dream of it? Did Satoshi write you a Facebook message? How did that happen? Um, yeah, I'm best friends with Satoshi on Facebook. <laughs> he wrote me a message. No, uh, but actually it did come from Facebook. I had a friend who part of the Free State Project um, he, he was a friend up there in New Hampshire with me and he posted about it, um, some article, this was like early May of 2011. And it just said about how this interesting digital currency that had gone up 500% since the fall or whatever, and it caught my eye. And, uh, then I just spent hours and hours and hours reading about it. I, I think a similar story to how many people got involved, which is that they just fell down the, the rabbit hole. And uh, you know, most of us are still down here. Did Did you end up in the hospital like Bitcoin Jesus from no. like dehydration or something? I didn't. I remembered to eat and drink, um, <laughs> but I did. You know, stop doing every everything I was doing and just became totally obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to. I I've heard you say in a in a presentation before uh, that you used to be a Bitcoin maximalist, and now. Your current business, Shapeshift.io, of course, is proof that you are no longer a Bitcoin maximalist. But I want you to define that term for us and tell us what it was that caused you to change your mind. Um, so the term Bitcoin maximalist means someone who thinks that Bitcoin will be the only um, form of digital value, the only form of digital exchange, the only cryptocurrency. Um, it's the idea that uh, you don't need multiple monies. Uh, Bitcoin's the best. It has the most traction. It has the most security. Um, it has all the momentum. By far the largest market cap and liquidity. Uh, so it it will over time push all the others out of the out of the market. Um, and I I generally agree with that sentiment to a point, uh, which is that there there isn't a need to have lots of forms of money. Just like there's not a need to have lots of different units of measurement for distance, right? Even even two uh, standard metric is, is 
too many. We should all all be using the metric system for for measuring distance. Um, money is a, a measurement of 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 wealth and value, and you don't need lots of ways to measure it. Um, but when different digital assets can do unique things that Bitcoin cannot do, then they have a, a place and a value and a role to play as as complements, not necessarily as competing currencies, but as uh, other digital assets that do special things. And so you have um, you have coins that are more private than Bitcoin. They just have different ways of handling the the privacy aspect. You have coins that are pegged to the value of dollars. You have coins that have advanced scripting languages like Ethereum. Um, these won't necessarily compete with Bitcoin as pure money, but they will exist in tandem with Bitcoin, fulfilling different needs that Bitcoin doesn't fill. And, and that's a good thing, I think. Hmm. Now, now this gets to the crux of what I wanted to talk about, because it seems like currency is a thing in which obviously the network effect is paramount. And so one may want to hold the currency that the most other people hold because that guarantees that you'll have the most other interested trading partners. Mm -hmm. And I, and I can see that aspect of it. Uh, and then other times I wonder, um, as you've said, you don't believe that cryptocurrency, any other cryptocurrency will compete with Bitcoin in the exact space where Bitcoin performs. Basically nothing that is just like Bitcoin can compete with Bitcoin. And I'm wondering what your view is on, uh, do, you, do you foresee people just enjoying diversity for the sake of diversity? Basically? Yeah, um, for a while. Um, you know, I think during its experimental phase, which is, you know, its first 10 years of life, there is value in simply having other coins purely for diversity reasons. There could be some terrible bug with Bitcoin that caused it to collapse. Um, there could be some regulation that applied to Bitcoin, but for some reason didn't apply to something else. There, it's it's an unknown an unknown world, and and often it's better to have a, a diverse ecosystem of, of lots of different types of assets. So I, th I think there's certainly value in that. Um, in 50 years, are people going to have five different coins in their wallet that are all purely for payments? I don't I don't think so. I think that wouldn't make sense. But they may have. Uh, you know, 20 different types of blockchain assets that all do different things. Some might be um, access tokens for certain programs. Um, some might be, you know, stable with certain assets. Some might represent certain assets. Um, you know, you could have a, a coin that represented a, a share in a Taylor Swift song and would pay you dividends over time from her earnings, that kind of thing. Bitcoin's not going to not going to do that and and it, it shouldn't i mean it it fulfills the role of money really well but there are lots of other ways of of using value that are not necessarily money that other types of digital assets can uh, can take on neat well that's very interesting and um what as far as uh development do you foresee these say it's 50 years into the future and i have 20 different kinds of blockchain assets in my wallet do you foresee those living on 20 different blockchains or, or what's your take on this whole notion of side chains and, and, and that uh, alternate view of how different functionalities might be achieved? Um, I think most coins will be on a few blockchains. So I, I imagine a world and predictions of this kind are always going to be wrong, right? But I imagine a world where <laughs> there are several large popular blockchain protocols and millions of different assets live on those things. Um, maybe there will just be one. I mean, maybe the Bitcoin blockchain will become the platform on which absolutely everything is built, but I think it's more likely there will be a small uh, handful of, of popular blockchains that are used. Um, I don't think if there are a million digital assets out there that there will be a million blockchains. That, that would be highly inefficient. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's shift gears to shape shift. Uh, that, is, that was good. Yeah, you like yeah. that? Yeah, you've been working <laughs> on that one for a while, right? Free for you here on the Daily Decrypt, Eric Virus. <laughs> yes, yes, Very nice. yes. So I wanted to ask. I guess I remember when Shapeshift first came out, and I thought, oh, that's a clever name. 
And then I saw, you know, like no account needed, you know, just come to our website and we'll swap a doodle for you. And I remember thinking like, that's, that's just like a bold move. Like what made you think that you could have an exchange without accounts, Eric? What made you think you could well, do I, that? Who told you you could do that? I, I got Obama's permission first. I, I spent two years trying to get a call with him and then t pitched him the idea and he said, yeah, sure. So after the, after his endorsement, I felt like it was probably good to go forward with it. Uh, no, in reality, I, I wanted to speculate on some strange altcoin that I heard of like in mid or early 2014. And I, I just wanted to put a few hundred dollars into it. I didn't want to spend a lot of time researching or like setting up an account and figuring out a wallet situation and all that. I just... I wanted to have some within one within 10 seconds of having the thought. And I was like, I have some Bitcoin. Why the hell can't I just snap my fingers and turn it into some other digital currency? It, it really shouldn't be any harder than that. And so I, as I thought about that, I just realized, well, of course it can be done. It's just one of many things in the ecosystem that people haven't built yet. So I thought, well, I, I should build this because I think it'll be very important to have a, a mechanism by which any digital asset can be instantly converted into any other digital asset. So that was that was the idea. It was sort of something I built for myself. Uh, and uh, you know, often when when there's something that that a person wants, lots of other people want it too. And I and I read on Reddit the other day that uh, Shapeshift had a, a record sales day uh, over the weekend or something. Um, yeah, we, I mean, ever since January volumes have been growing like crazy. Um, so January was like 10, 10 X the volume of a year before. And already in February, we've, we've gone more than it's halfway through the month and we've already gone beyond the volume we did in January. So it's growing very fast, um, which is exciting and a little scary and, but you know, that's, it's fun. Right on. Well, and I, I have one final question for you, which is a bit of a reference to something you had said earlier, which is that you used to live uh, here in the free state, New Hampshire, where I am now. And you may or may not have heard that the move got triggered uh, last week. And I just wondered uh, if you had any plans to ever visit again or or perhaps even return here. And if so, what would it what would it take for you to do that? Uh, I certainly plan to visit often. Um, the Liberty Forum and, and Porkfest are two awesome events that I, I try to get to when I can. Um, you know, I, I if Bitcoin can get a little higher, I, I wouldn't mind buying some land out there in the free state and, uh, you know, being part, partly involved in that world. Um, you know, largely, I got excited about Bitcoin because it, it had the spirit of the free state project, which was, you know, to, to actually do something to expand liberty in the world, um, something which people think, well, I'll just go vote for a politician, but it's a very pointless and futile exercise. And the Free State Project was a really innovative way of, of changing things. And it was that sort of spirit that got me uh, extra excited about Bitcoin when I saw it um, as something that would, that would help bring liberty, not by asking permission from anyone, but just by people voluntarily starting to use it. Um, so I, I like to think that I, I uh, am furthering the spirit of the Free State Project in, in my career and in my work in Bitcoin. Um, but yeah, I have, I have a, lot of, a lot of love and affection for what the Free State Project is doing and, and try to get out there when I can. Righteous, righteous. Well, I do believe that you have a blog and, and it's a cleverly titled one. Tell people where they can find that if they're interested. The blog is moneyandstate.com moneyandstate.com. Um, so I, I post there occasionally uh, when I get on a, a coffee fueled binge of opinionated thinking. <laughs> um, and, you know, the Bitcoin, I think, to some some people in the world is sort of a way to move money more cheaply. But to a lot of us who, who got involved early on, it's really a, a very powerful tool for bringing liberty to the world um, to separate money from from state in the, in the same way and for the same reason as it was important to separate church from state and for the same reason that it's important to separate speech and, and thought and relationships from the state. Uh, money money is no different in that aspect. And so that's that's where the name of the blog came from. And ultimately, I see my role in the Bitcoin world as uh, as trying to build a system that, that demonstrates that, that money should be left to the marketplace and not to government. Well, 
That's excellent, Mr. Beerhoos. And uh, I am confident I will see you at a future Liberty Forum or Pork Fest. And so until then, thank you for your time. Thanks so much. Have a good one. Today's episode is brought to you by Fort Galt, an early stage community on the coast of Chile near Valdivia for entrepreneurs and their families. The 100 acre property is pre-installed with water and power lines and Bitcoin is now being accepted for the purchase of both residential lots and apartment units. The first apartment building is almost entirely sold out and construction on it is set to begin within three months. You can learn more about the project and its prices by visiting fortgalt.com. Feel free to leave your wisdom or otherwise in the comment section below and have yourself a righteous day. Like an electric-